Here it comes, the moment of truth. Did we paint flying coney pink or green? Or did we go with a more traditional color like white or black? I can't wait to share it with you. The big task for this year is to get the hull fixed from the outside. We hope this could be achieved by good pressure wash and a little bit of paint. When we hauled out the boat, we discovered a very severe corrosion damage. So now we are facing a labor extensive, very expensive and extended time in the shipyard. Hello, it's so good to see you again. I'm Barbara and together with Daniel I restored this historic steel ship. This time we finally paint Flying Coney's top coat and reveal her new color. But before we can start painting, we have to find her waterline and tape it off. But before we start into this video, I want to welcome all our new supporters on Patreon and Paypal. And a huge thanks goes to all our officers. Your constant support really keeps this project going. Thank you so much. And now, let's bring you up to date. So far, we ripped out all the interior from the saloon, underneath the aft cabin and in the forecastle, and removed a lot of dusty old cork insulation together with some frames. After that, the lads from the yard repaired the very big corrosion damage. And we called in an expert who discovered a very big hole. And while the shipyard was repairing this hole, we continued with massive destruction and removing a tank from hell. Eventually, we started de-rusting the waterline and preparing the hull for painting. While doing so, we found another big hole and got rid of it by simply removing an overplating and setting our boat on fire. Then we removed even more rust at the stern and to our very big surprise, the hull underneath it was in pristine condition. Finally, we finished this enormous task with a layer of two component primer. Ultimately, Flying Coney got a new commercially rated Seawolf and the class surveyor came one more time to inspect the hull and he made sure that the ship is safe for sailing. Well, I believe for the, for the Costco, uh, we can say now, uh, today it's good. Finally, Jan from the shipyard sprayed the primer and the anti-fouling. So what's up next? But before we start painting, we have to find the waterline again. And Daniel had the clever idea to put on some tape before Jan sprays the primer, so we could easily find the waterline again. The next step was to actually tape the waterline. It was a bit tricky for several reasons. First of all, the original waterline was far from perfect. Flying Coney has a slight list to the port side, so there the waterline was completely overgrown and basically no longer existent. Then, we intentionally left some spots right at the waterline where we removed all the rust with the terco. However, at least two of them were at the huge overplating, which we had to remove later on. So in the end we were left with only a few spots of waterline, a laser level and a lot of uncertainty how to tape a line. Luckily two fellow boat owners joined us. But instead of helping us with the waterline, they decided it was much more fun to play around with the camera. Daniel, we're talking a lot of shit. Never mind, I will hear it in the edit. <laughs> and don't worry, I leave it in. <laughs> like, can we do it like this? Do like it what? <laughs> on the flying cone only, yeah, with the laser. Yeah. To get a nice shot of the flying cone with the laser. Like okay. that? Ah. Three seconds yeah. and then move? Yeah. Okay. And watch out for your shadow. Yeah. Thank you. 
The one thing about painting we were most looking forward to was the silence. Whenever you work on a steel ship, it is quite noisy. The pressure washing, the angle grinder, of course the tergo, but even welding. Through the magic of editing, most of the time, you don't hear it. But the shipyard is unbelievably loud. But we were finally done with all the noisy jobs. And luckily the shipyard was empty when we started painting. So we were looking forward to some quiet days without hearing protection. Just enjoy the painting. When you restore a ship of historic relevance, there are two ideologies. You can conserve a historic state as it is, keep all the imperfection and scars and only repair structural relevant parts, or you rebuild her as a new ship, exchange everything that has even the slightest flaw and fare the steel hull to death until it looks like a plastic boat. Well, maybe I'm a bit biased, because I'm a big fan of historic looking ships with history. So of course we will conserve Flying Coney's traditional look. She's already been around for so long and she witnessed quite a lot. Fished in the North Sea, was confiscated and used as a warship and even sailed the ocean as a topsail schooner. All the imperfections in her hull tell a story. And we want to keep them, because that's exactly what makes an old ship with history. Back in the days when Flying Coney fished in the North Sea, the cables from her nets left their marks on the bulwark. With the riveted hull and the visible hull plates, Flying Coney is a living part of shipbuilding history. That's how building steel ships started, how it was done in the very first days. And all the rust pittings and defects in the old steel are important. If you get rid of them, you get rid of Flying Coney's identity. And if you really want a ship that looks like new, there is only one option. Win the lottery and build one.
And now comes the most satisfying part, putting off the tape. Let's hope it reveals a nice sharp line. As you know from the last video, we will paint Flying Coney with a one component system. And we talked a lot about the differences of one and two component paints and why we choose the one component. But there is one big advantage I haven't told you yet. One component paint is way cheaper than two component paint. We want to blast Flying Coney's hull somewhere in the near future and after blasting we will put on an expensive two component coating that will stay on for many many years and reduces the maintenance work drastically. But before we do that, we want to be absolutely sure which color we want. Because it would be a lot of work and quite expensive to change the color afterwards. So right now we use the opportunity of the cheaper paint to experiment a bit with different color schemes and different colors. Actually, we like the ivory that is on now. However, now is the perfect time to experiment so we use this opportunity to play around. And if you don't like it, we just buy a new bucket of paint and Flying Coney gets a new top coat. No problem at all. Now it's my turn to reveal this nice sharp line, but we have to wait until we are back in the water to see if it's actually a level line, and that will be really interesting for us. But what I can tell is that it's already looking so beautiful. Really can't wait to see how it looks when the new paint is on. Must look so incredible amazing okay and The tape is gone. And that's all we have time for today. If you enjoyed watching wait, this video... Wait, wait, wait. Why? It is a good point to end this video. We taped off the waterline, we put on the new anti-fouling, we even pulled off the tape. Flying Cone is looking great. But everyone wants to see Flying Cone's new color. And I think we can't end this video before we painted her. Fine. If you think that makes them subscribe. Well, let's hope. What do you think about the color? It depends on how you adjust the white balance in the camera.
So we went with black blue. Choosing the color wasn't easy. We wanted a dark color because obviously flying cone is an old lady and they usually don't come in white. And we didn't want to go with anything extraordinary like green or pink. So that basically left us with two options, black or blue. And we kind of choose both. But all joking aside, here in the Netherlands there are many blue fishing vessels. And even so we really liked their appearance, we didn't want Flying Coney to look like one of them. She's a tall ship and not a fishing vessel anymore. So it was very important for us that the blue is not too bright. We wanted a yacht-like dark blue. So we ended up with the darkest blue we could came up with, which is black blue. And yeah, it's almost black. So if you thought we painted our ship black, I don't blame you. The next time we would probably choose a slightly brighter blue, like pearl night blue, but for now I really like Flying Coney's new color. So what do you think? Let me know in the comments. And now let's continue with another painting b-roll. Can I use epic music for that one as well, or is it already too much? Well, I guess there is no such thing as too much epic music in a video. Did you eat paint? Yep. Tastes blue. Since we are not as big as Jan, we actually do need a working platform to tape off the waterline and paint the new top coat. But moving this working platform around is a really awful job, so we decided to reduce it as much as possible. Therefore, we taped off the bit of the waterline where the platform was, painted the top coat there, pulled off the tape, and then we moved on. However, the bulwark was already taped off on the whole length of Flying Coney. So now comes the satisfying part of removing the last bits of tape. <coughs> Wait, wait, wait. I know enjoyable videos and all that, but that goes too far. We are done with painting and you already worked a lot on this video. This is a perfect ending. We will not start the whole launch now. Are you sure? Yes. Can I continue with my outro now? Go on. So the paint is on, the tape is off and Flying Coney looks amazing. But that's all we have time for today. Next time we will finally launch Flying Coney. If you don't want to miss it, here is the subscribe button. If you click that one and the bell, YouTube will notify you each time we post a new video, which is usually on Fridays. Thank, Thank you. you so much for watching and see you next time. I thought you were already gone. <laughs>